Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we'll discuss about the maximum sum subarray problem, which sometimes students find very difficult to understand. But let me tell you one very honest thing. This is absolutely easy to understand. At least what I am going to explain after watching this video, you will definitely fall in love with this algorithm and this type of intuitive algorithm that how this works. And this is also a very basic and fundamental intuitive algorithm for dynamic programming. So now without further delay, let's start about the maximum subarray sum problem. So what the problem says, you have an array, you have all the elements inside that array. You need to find out the subarray inside that array that contains the maximum sum. Now, first thing, what is a subarray? Subarray is nothing but the contiguous part of an array. So in the base case, a single element will obviously a subarray, right? So all these single element like minus two or minus three or four, all these things are a subarray. Minus two, one and minus three could be a subarray. But what can't be a subarray? Let's say minus two, one or let's say four. This can't be a subarray. Strictly this can't be a subarray because minus two, one and four are not contiguous inside that array, right? So what is a subarray? Subarray is a contiguous part of an array. Now we have find out what is a subarray. So in, in our case, in this example, what should be the maximum sum subarray? If this is a subarray, what will be its sum? It would be minus one. If I consider this subarray, one minus three or four, what will be its sum? Its sum would be minus two plus four, that will be two, right? What will be maximum in this case? It would be four minus one, two and one. These four elements subarray would be having maximum sum of what? Minus one, one gets cancelled, four plus two is six. This is our maximum sum subarray. Now, how can we find what will be the maximum sum subarray? How can we find out what which subarray having the maximum sum? Now, what will be our brute force approach? Brute force approach is very simple. Find out all the subarrays and then calculate the sum of each subarrays. How to find out all the subarrays? So we can consider one thing that minus two is a subarray. Next, we can consider minus two comma one is another subarray. Next minus two comma one comma three, sorry, minus three is a subarray. Minus two comma one comma minus three comma four is a subarray. So in that way, from each element up to the last element of that array, all the elements will be consisting of each and every subarray. Now tell me one simple thing, how many number of subarrays an array contains? If I consider this element, what will be the number of subarrays? Minus two is a subarray, minus two one is a subarray, minus two one minus three is a subarray. And this list will go on and it will go on until the last element, right? How many number of subarrays possible? N number of subarrays are possible if you start from zero index. If you start from one index, N minus one subarray is possible. If we start from second index, N minus two subarrays are possible. If we start from third index, N minus three and the list goes on, it will goes on up till the single subarray will be left on the last element of that array. So what is the sum of this? This is like 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus up to n minus 1 plus n. What is the sum? n into n plus 1 by 2. So order of n square subarrays are there for each and every array having n elements. Now how can we find out the sum of every subarray? We can traverse the subarray from left to right. It would take order of n cube time to find out the sum of all subarrays in the brute force solution. But as the subarray is the contiguous segment of the array, we can find out the sum from like we, if we have the sum of this, we can find out the sum of this also in a single amount of time because we know what is the sum of minus two and one and then we'll add minus three. We know what is the sum of minus two, one and minus three and then we'll add four here, right? So in that way, we can do it in constant amount of time. So in that case, it will recur order of n square time to find out all the subarrays and then calculate the sum of each subarrays. Now, can we improve the time complexity? Of course, yes. Let's see how we can do it. Now, to find out the maximum sum of subarray, we need to use a special algorithm that is called the cadence algorithm. Now, understand the intuition behind the cadence algorithm. I'll explain cadence algorithm. What is the statement of the cadence algorithm? But first, understand the intuition behind this maximum sum subarray problem. We have total nine elements. We have index from zero to eight and we are at the third index. Right. And we want to find what would be the maximum sum subarray up to this element, up to this third index from zero up to this third index. What would be the maximum sum subarray? Now, look carefully. 
if we know if we somehow know i i don't know how can we know but if we somehow know what is the sum of the maximum sub array until the previous index until the index 2 we can then find out the sum of sub arrays consisting of this index 3 in the simple very simplistic way so we'll be having basically two choices we can either include this element and take the maximum sum up to this index plus we can include this element into our maximum sum sub array otherwise we can exclude the maximum sum until the previous index and we can include this element because if the sum is already less than whatever we have at this position why should we take that right so what cadence algorithm says that at any index i if we have the local maximum denoted at index i it would be nothing but the maximum of two quantities what as i already said it would be maximum of the element either the maximum of the element present at that index or it would be the element at that index plus the local maximum up to the previous index. Now we have understood that this maximum sum sub array can be solved if we can recursively find out all the local maximum starting from the 0th index. So if we at any index i, let's say we are at third index, we can find out what will be the local max at this third index by element present at the third index and the element present at third index plus the local maximum until this second index, right? So what will be the local maximum at the second index? Again, it will be the value of this element or the value of this element plus the local maximum at the first index, right? What will be the local maximum at the first index? In the same way, value or value plus local maximum at zeroth index. So in that way, you can recursively find out what will be the local maximum at any index i. So now see the solution from another angle. If we can finally somehow find the local maximum at zeroth index, we can use this to find out the local maximum at first index. Now, if we have the local maximum of first index, we can find out the local maximum of second index. We can also find out the local maximum of third index. In the same way, you can find out until the local maximum of the last index. So let's see how to write the code. And it's, it's very simple. Just you need to write two, three lines of code. It would be done. So now let's look at how to write the code for maximum sum sub array. As we already explained, we need two local variables. One is local max and one is global max. And we'll initialize this local max and global max to the first index element, right? And we'll just send the entire array as a parameter to uh, this maximum sum sub array function and also the size of the array. Also, we can calculate the size itself inside the function, but we're just sending it as a parameter, right? Now we need a loop. We need a for loop that will run from index one into i equal to one, i should be less than n, i plus plus. This should be our entire for loop. Now what we'll do, we'll simply calculate local max. So local max will be maximum of, as we already explained, it, was, it would be the maximum of two components, a of i or a of i plus local max. So this local max with any point of i will denote the local max at i minus 1 in index. And based on these two values, a of i or a of i plus local max will decide what will be the new local max. So now we'll make a simple comparison that if our local max, the newly calculated local max is greater than global max, which we already initialized as the first index element. If this local max, this calculated local max is greater than our global max, we'll update global max as our new local max because this would be having the maximum value. We'll store the maximum value in the global max. So what global max does, it takes the maximum of all the local max. So local max will be calculated for each index value from i equal to 1 to n and global max will store the maximum of all. So for each iteration, we'll just calculate if local max, the newly calculated local max is greater than our global max. If it happens, we'll just update global max with local max. That's it. Now this for loop will run until the end. Now we'll at the end, we'll return the maximum value that is stored at our global max variable, right? So that is the end of the program. So this simple program, this simple, just this simple line, local max equal to maximum of a of i, and a of i plus local max. That is the simple and fundamental line of this algorithm. 
Except this line, this algorithm has nothing, just nothing. This simple line explains how the algorithm works and the very basic intuition of how dynamic programming works. So let's take a real example that how you can use the cadence algorithm to solve maximum sum subarray problems. So we have an array having eight elements. Index starts from zero until seven. So now we have taken two local variables. One is local max and one is global max and initialized to the first element of that array. So it would be initialized as minus two. It would be again initialized as minus two. So our I will be pointing to this index i is 1. We calculate the local max using this formula. So what would be a of i? It is minus 3. What is a of i plus local max? Local max was minus 2. So minus 3 minus 2 it will be minus 5. So what would be local max? Local max would be maximum of these two values. Maximum of minus 3 and maximum of minus 5. What is the maximum? Maximum is minus 3. So local max will be updated to minus 3. So now we'll make a comparison. If local max is greater than global max, no, in that case minus 3 is not greater than minus 2. So we'll not update global max, right? So we'll move our i pointer to this one. What would be a of i? a of i will be 4. So it would be 4 minus 3. Local max was minus 3. So 4 minus 3 will be 1. So now what will be local max? Local max will be the maximum of 4 and 1. What is the maximum? Maximum will be 4. So local max will be updated to 4. And now 4 is certainly greater than minus 2. So our global max will be 4. As you can see here, up to this index, up to this point, what is the maximum sum subarray? It is always the global max. It is always 4, right? So what you have found, this single element will consist the maximum sum subarray. So in that case, our algorithm is giving the right answer till this point. Now we'll move this i pointer to next in index. So what will be array of i? It would be minus 1. Uh, what will be array of i plus local max? Minus 1 plus 4. It would be 3. So local max will be maximum of minus 1 and 3. It would be 3. But 3 is not certainly greater than 4. So we will not update that. So i will be incremented to this position. a of i will be minus 2. It would be minus 2 plus 3. That is 1. So local max will be greater than this minus 2 and 1. It would be 1 only, 1 is not greater than 4, so will not update. Next, I will be incremented to this position. Now, what is a of i? It is 1. Now, it will be 1 plus 1, that is 2. Local max will be greater than 1 and 2, so it would be 2 again. 2 is not greater than 4, so will not update. I will be incremented to this position. What is a of i? It is 5. What is a of i plus local max? 5 plus 2 that is 7. 7 is suddenly greater than 4. So we'll update the global max to 7. We'll again increment this i pointer. It would be a of i would be minus 3 and also local max will be updated from the previous step as 7. Now minus 3 plus 7 that is 4. So 4 is suddenly not greater than 7. So the answer will be 7. So the maximum sum subarray of this problem of this array having eight elements would be seven as you got from the global max answer. So that's it to this video. If you have any question, please put this in the comment section. And if you really like this video, please do subscribe to my channel and also hit the like button so that it motivates me to make these kind of videos more and more. So bus, see you in the next video. Till then take care and goodbye.